testimony or a prayer request on your heart this morning.
remember saving my soul in them. How much he blesses us, and if you could remember Brian this week, he has to make a decision about work where he wants to work. So, absolutely, amen. Like I like for the church to continue to remember my coworker um, Stephanie is her name. So the position that we work, um, the job that we hold, we don't work, we don't get paid. We are completely not benefited. We do this. She has been in the hospital few weeks and they're expecting um, up to two months getting different chemo, um, separate chemo treatment to treat a different chromosome that doesn't allow her body to accept the chemotherapy that they're giving for the leukemia. Um, so she's got two little boys at home, they're five and eight I believe, so please just pray for that family. Um, she can't see her boys. She um, is very very lonely there, so please, please just remember that family first. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello. This morning, she's going to around the altar join us for prayer.
appreciate it. Uh, feels like church today. There's, there's times we feel like taking a lap, and then uh, our fall. There's times we feel like worship. There's times we feel like raising hands. There's times we feel like shouting. And then we have a thought that is it really the right service for us. Hey, I, I have learned this, and I pray it's okay with you for me to say this. Uh, if worship doesn't embarrass your flesh, it might not be worship. Amen. If your carnal side, your sin side is okay with how you worship, you might be doing it wrong. Amen. So I feel like we ought to be more about, more about that than what we are. If that's right, can you say amen? amen? Let's go ahead and let's stand this morning, if you will. Look with me in the book of John this morning. Book of John, chapter number one. Book of John, chapter number one. If you have your Bible, we're blessed to be here. That's all of us. We're blessed to be here. John chapter number one, if you have your Bible. Been preaching on pursuing holiness. Um, not that I'm taking a Sunday break from that, but I'm taking a Sunday break from that. Um, looking forward to getting into the Word of God today. Had this on our heart all week. And uh, real, real excited. Amen. Not, not just one real, I'm real, real excited. Real, real. We need your prayers today. Look with us. John, St. John chapter 1, verse number 25. St. John 1, verse 25. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then? If, if you're not the Christ, if you're not Elias, neither that prophet. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom you know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latched I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Betharaba, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The very next day, Jesus coming unto him. I want to read that line one more time, if it would be fine with you. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him. That's the reading of God's word. You can be seated, if you will. Don't hate me for dropping you off in the middle of the verse. Today, uh, but I, I ain't gonna lie. I might get pretty excited just preaching about Jesus. So if I if I take a lap, somebody gets stretched up, take one with me, Amen. Uh, but I love the teacher preach today. Uh, I got a lot to go over in part. If we could give you a thought, give you a title, I want to preach you this title. He didn't leave me. He didn't leave me, Amen. Our Father, we look to you, Lord. We thank you for this day. Thank you for being our God. We thank you for being good. Thank you. Lord, for the day that you reach down to us eternally, God, you saved us by your grace. God, it's true, we, we were nearing despair, and we would have done more than got near to it. We would have accepted despair if you hadn't reached down for us. God, I thank you for that. Thank you for the good singing today. Lord, I, I thank you that all our hope is in you. And God, because of that, there's coming kind of today, the saints, Lord, we'll, we'll go marching in when the roll is called up yonder. And Father, I, I don't know, Lord, if they'll call A through Z or not, but Lord, when the church steps into that glorious city, we'll be glad for the day the roll is called. Father, we need you. Lord, I pray that you preach this morning. Father, settle us, Lord Jesus, in your word. I pray lost will get saved today. I pray discouraged will be encouraged. I pray the prodigal will come home. Give strength to the weak. Lord, all that's needed, you can do. All that's needed, you can do. I can't do anything. It's got to be you or nothing. Lord, we pray and we ask these things in your name. Amen and amen. We need your prayers that the Lord would help us. I love the book of John. Uh, it's been on my heart for months now. And uh, one of these days, uh, no time soon, but one of these days, I'd, I'd love to walk you and I together, you and I, the church together. I'd love to walk through the book of John. I'd love to. Maybe somewhere between now and the next 30 years we'll get to walk through that together looking real forward to it. Uh, and I can tell that you are too. Amen. Amen. Uh, but I want to preach this morning. He didn't leave me. Uh, and I thank God for the book of John. Uh, John kicks off in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. And I, I, I love this verse in verse number 3. Just look there with us if you will. Verse number 3, all things were made by him. And was at, without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. 
and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. I, I want to look at just a couple of things uh, right there. In the beginning, uh, take notice of this, and you forgive me, I, I, I'm probably going to take a lot of scripture today, so if you didn't bring your Bible with you, you're probably going to be staring at me for a few minutes. Uh, but I, I pray that you read along and listen to the Word of God. In the beginning, if you have a King, a King James Version Bible, in the beginning was the Word, and that Word is capital W. So if I could, let me change that just for a moment. Nobody fall off your KJV rocker. I'm going to change some Scripture. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Jesus. And without Jesus was not anything made that was made. In Jesus was and still is life. And the life was the light of men. Hallelujah for that. Amen. I, I want to say this. Uh, John tells us that the light came into the darkness. And the darkness comprehended means that it couldn't understand. It didn't understand how this light could be. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that Jesus didn't leave me in the dark. Amen. You look in the book of Genesis, and we've gone over this before, in the book of Genesis chapter number 1, uh, that there was darkness that reigned over the whole face of the earth. But if you look at the first three words of the book of Genesis chapter number 1, in the beginning, God. I'm glad that before there was darkness, there was God. Amen. And I'm talking about as a natural sense, before there was any type of creation, there was God. But I'm happy to say in mine and your lives that before there's ever been darkness in mine and your life, there's been God. Uh, before there was sin in mine and your life, there was God. Before there were problems in mine and your lives, there were God. Before there was drama in mine and your life, there was God. Before there was sickness in mine and your life, there was God. Before there was death in mine and your life, I'm telling you, you look at Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, and what a story it is. And this is not the message. This is just to kind of get you primed up and ready. If you've got a, a, a push mower, you've got to prime it five times just to get her to go. I want to press the priming bowl for a minute if I could. Uh, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, the four Hebrew children that were cast into the fiery furnace. And this furnace was so hot that uh, these men had literally watched people be burnt alive right in front of them. So there's no way that as soon as this fiery furnace opens that anything's going to happen to them outside of death. And can't you imagine as these men are being thrown in that they scream as soon as the furnace opens. And then they're screaming and then all of a sudden they notice, man, you screaming and you ain't even hurt. Amen. Isn't it awkward to be around folks that are panicking and there's nothing wrong? Amen. Or to be around people that are acting like they're drowning but they're in the kiddie pool. Amen. And, and, and they're looking at each other and there's nothing going on. And the king would look in and say, I don't see four men. Or I don't see three, but I see four. And the four has the form of the Son of God. I want to announce to you, aren't you glad that he's not the fourth man? Aren't you glad he's the first man? Amen. I'm glad that before I got to the fiery furnace, he was already there. I'm glad that before I got to the valley of shadow of death, he's already there. I'm glad that before I got to the problem, he, the solution, was already there. I'm glad before I got to the sickness, he was there. I'm glad before I got to my roads in hope, was already there. Amen. Let's look at the book of John together. Look at John together. Jesus, John said this about Jesus. He is full of truth. And then we look in the book of John chapter number 2 and I want to remind you he didn't leave me. Uh, we look in the book of John chapter number 2 and we'll find the very first miracle of Jesus. Jesus shows up to the wedding at the marriage there at Cana. Amen. And, and, and look at this with me. How you talk about a miracle. How Jesus' mother Mary comes to him and says son they have no wine here at the wedding. Amen. And Jesus looks at her. Amen. And tells his mother to be quiet. I don't know about you, but if I've looked at my mother and said, hush up, I better be Jesus. Amen. Uh, but he told his mother to be quiet. Amen. And Mother Mary would look at all those around and say, whatever my son tells you to do, do that. And Jesus walks up to have the water and he changes the water into wine. Now, that might not mean much to you. And you pray this morning that we can get to the message. But I want to say this to you. How we look at 
Jesus was full of grace and truth. Yes. You better be thankful this morning how that Jesus turned the water into wine. What does that mean? How you better be thankful that Jesus didn't leave you in the law. Amen. Under the law, you don't deserve forgiveness. Under the law, how you don't deserve compassion. Under the law, you don't deserve any type of freedom from your sin. Under the law, only thing you deserve is more bondage. But the more sin you commit, the more you owe to the law. I'm glad today that Jesus didn't leave me in what I deserve. Amen. I'm preaching the folks that you don't have what you deserve. Amen. And to the best of my knowledge, I got four folks that smiling back at me. Amen. When you look at a God that He's full of grace, what does that mean? That's the wild part. I've heard liberal Christians say that the reason that He changed the water into the wine was just to keep the party going. Amen. What foolishness and what nonsense. How can I say this to you? How the reason he changes the water into wine is to purchase mine and your forgiveness. Amen. Amen. I want to look at that. He's full of grace, meaning this. How that the worst of the worst can be forgiven. How about he didn't leave me under the law? How where I could be stoned? How about he didn't leave me under the law? How where I could have amputation? How about he didn't leave me under the law? Everybody all right? 
Chapter number three, if we can, we'll not go through the entire book. Amen. That takes forever. Amen. John chapter number three. I'm glad he didn't leave me in my questions. Amen. There's a man that comes to Jesus by night. Amen. His name was Nicodemus. And Nicodemus would come to Jesus and he would ask him this question. How can a man be born again? How can he be born the second time when he is old? How can I ask you this morning? Is anybody else glad that Jesus didn't leave you your questions? Amen. How there's things that don't make sense. How can someone go to a perfect place called heaven? How can someone be born again the second time? How can we forsake all of our sin? How is there a God that forgives so much? How is there a God that loves so much? Can I ask you, how many of you all were saved this morning? Anybody saved in the house? Amen. My friend, I believe with all of my heart there are people that God wants to save and God wants to give them eternal life. God wants to give them salvation that's beyond measure. But they won't quit asking God questions. Amen. Well, Chase, how can God forgive me? How can God restore me? How, how is this possible? I don't understand salvation. I want to preach you something real quick. If you ever get to a spiritual status that you can explain the love of God, congratulations, you made it farther than I have. Amen. If you can get to a place that you can explain the perfect grace of God, congratulations, you made it farther than any other
was abused when she was a little bitty. How she was abused. How she's only allowed to eat refried beans. That's the only thing her stomach can handle. Because of how she was abused. Can I say this to you today? My beloved friend, listen to me. And listen to me well. You have a God that shows up every single day. To pay your bills. To feed your tummies. To give you sleep. And I will chase I Super spiritual. 
spiritual people, James will say this. The reason Jesus wept, man, was because he wept because they didn't have faith in him. Super spiritual would say, well, the reason he wept was because of the status of their soul. We can't take for things that aren't written in Scripture. This is what I know. Jesus had a friend and Jesus cried. Surely he had borne our griefs and borne our sorrows. Jesus was a man of sorrow. That's why he's never left us in our sorrow. Is anybody there? I got to ask you, and I talked to a dear friend of mine about this just the other night. He didn't know he was going to be preaching on it. Boy, I did though, and I was happy to get back into it today. Hey, can I say this to you? Sorrow is bound to happen to us all. Can you hear me? You lose a brother, you'll be sorrowful. You lose a niece, you'll be sorrowful. You lose a husband, a wife, a parent, a kid, you'll be sorrowful. You lose a friend, you lose any type of family, any type of friend. There'll be sorrow there. And can I say this? There'll be folks that look at you and tell you you're wrong because you're sorrowing. You're a child of God. You shouldn't have sorrow. I'm telling you, if they can get to a place, and you forgive me for this statement if it offends you, if they can get to a place that they can lose someone so close to them and there's not a little bit of heartache there and there's not a little bit of grief there, then maybe they've made it farther than you and I will. But this is what I believe. If Jesus can weep at a funeral, so can you and I. Amen. Oh, listen, I've got to wonder about something. Hey, Amen. Lazarus has been dead. Hey, Amen. But Jesus didn't show up on day one and been dead. He didn't show up on day two and been dead. He didn't show up on day three. I've got to wonder something. Do you realize I talked to Brother Bob Zabatieri about this a couple of years ago? And he said, Chase, hey, Amen. Brother Bob has three kids. Hey, Amen. And you need to pray. I'm closing my book because the more I stare at it, the more preaching there is. Can I say this? My brother Bob has three kids. Amen. He's had two of them die. Amen. One in a motorcycle accident. And one in a car crash. Amen. From the spiritual side. What a blessing. What a blessing. How they had Bible school the week of their last daughter that died. And in their Bible school, they had 11 souls get saved in their Bible school that week. Amen. At his first daughter's funeral. Of Miss Sharon. Amen. At the funeral. Of there were 20 people that got saved in that funeral. Amen. What a blessing. Can you say amen somewhere in the house? What a blessing. But can I ask you something, Wayne? If there's 20 that get saved in the funeral, did that bring back his daughter? If there's 11 that get saved, did it bring back his kid? How can I say this? How God told me. He said, Chase, from the moment I lost my kids, I always had the promises of God with me. How when it took six weeks, how just for me to get to a place in my sorrow that I could listen to God. Amen and amen. How can I say this to you today? If there's anybody here with sorrow of heart, it doesn't matter if it's over a death, over finances, over betrayal, over loved ones, whatever your sorrow may be. How can I say this? If Jesus doesn't show up until day four, days one, two, and three, you've still got his promises. Amen. If Jesus doesn't show up for six weeks, you've still got his promises. If he doesn't show up as you need him to for three years, how can I say this to you? I can remember being in a revival. Amen. I want to thank God 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Yeah. Oh, well, just, well, just stop there and shout on for a minute. No, I ain't plucking our church heartstrings. If Miss Dolores was sitting right where Tanner is, she'd just wait and say, keep on preaching.
I got this one and one more. I'm dying to get to the last one. I'll preach this one real quick. How many of y'all ever lied? God bless you. Do you realize if Jesus would have left you in that sin, you'd become a liar? Amen. How many of you all have ever had angry, evil, or revengeful thoughts? Do you realize if Jesus leaves you in those thoughts, you could be in prison today? God help that poor soul cut you off of Burger King. How many of you all have been depressed when you were blessed? Do you realize if Jesus leaves you in those thoughts, it's unto telling what happens to you? I'm not going to define this one. How many of you all are former addicts? I raised my hand. There's three of us. What if God leaves you in that? Anybody there? What if he leaves you in that? I feel like I haven't covered everybody, so let me just go ahead and cover everybody. Yeah. How many of you are a sinner? <laughs> Present tense or past tense. See, some of you are like us, sinners on the outside, but on the inside. There's no change, baby. Do you realize if Jesus leaves you in that sin, there's only one place for you to go. Is it okay if I preach Bible? Yeah. Going to heaven is not based on good works, and going to hell is not based on bad works. Going to heaven is based on the acceptance of His Son. Going to hell is based on the refusal of His Son. Yeah. Boy, I tell you, Baptists don't smile much. <laughs> But when you look at the fact that he didn't leave you in your sin. Amen. I tell you what, a couple boys this morning. Amen. Jackson, Ethan, Chase. Jesus knows those boys as teenagers. Knew them as little men. Already sees them as young men. And sees them as old men. What does that mean? Sees the mistakes that they made, sees the mistakes that they're making, sees the mistakes that they will make, and still chooses to love them. That might not mean anything to you, but do you realize that there are kids, Brian, that they have done so much evil that it's caused their parents to cast them out? Do you realize that there's parents that's messed up so bad it's caused their kids to forsake them? And to realize that there's a God that says, I won't leave you in that mess. Lord, have mercy. I got a feeling if we were singing loud right now, some folks would be shouting. Amen. Don't shout over singing if you can't shout over the Savior. Rose in religion, when the preacher swings his arm and gets a tiptoe, he's a getting happy. <laughs> so y'all are saved. We'll finish here. So y'all are saved. Hallelujah for that. And how many of y'all have sinned this week? Amen. How many of y'all have sinned since you got saved? Yeah. What if we believe in some? You sin after you get saved, it breaks your salvation. Ain't you glad you've got an unbreakable love from an unbreakable God? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Mm -hmm. When I get low, He just reaches lower. When I'm broken, His hands just get tired. When I get weak, he just gets stronger. Lord, have mercy. Let's finish. Look at John chapter number 14. We'll be done here. 
This would be good to read together. Thank you for letting me preach today. Pray it's going to help the John chapter 14. We'll read this together. I'll open my Bible, you open yours.
that's going to take the whole world. He's here. He's here. He's here. Boy, can you imagine the hearts that would light up Facebook? But can I turn that? Children of God have never seen a better day. But the lost have never seen a worse. Is it okay to finish this way? The day heaven opens up will also be the day the hell opens up. Everybody still with me? Amen. What time is it, Jason? Just something 30. <laughs> Can I declare to anybody that's listening, there's nobody in this room that wants to go to hell. But there's folks here that aren't ready to go to heaven. I want to give you my favorite point of this whole message, and I ain't going to preach it, I'm just going to give you a promise. At seven year old, at Five Black Gun Baptist Church, I'm glad he didn't leave me on the altar. Me and Scott's the only two that say Scott said amen to that. <laughs> Chase Flesh Hour knelt right here. You want to know why that moment is as precious as it is? What would it have been, Bob, that night in the revival? Chase stays here now. Never gets satisfied. Gets up, walks back. Jesus left him. Happy anybody say? What about, Carly, what about the moment that you went to an altar and Jesus didn't leave you there, but he went home with you? What about the moment that you was begging to get out of hell, begging for God to save you, Miss Christy? Jesus could look at you and said, I see the mess you're going to be. I see it. Mm -hmm. Me and you ain't doing business. But Jesus heard you on the altar, Holly. He didn't leave you. He didn't leave you. If you're born again, say amen. Amen. We get ready to need your help, born again. There's folks here this morning that need to get saved. And they need to know that Jesus won't leave them on the altar. Amen. I'm going to give you on the count of three, born again. On the count of three, I want you to say he won't leave you. One, two, three. He won't leave you. You've heard it from the born again that's been on the altar in the church. You've heard it from the born again that's been on the altar in their home somewhere. Jesus didn't leave him there. Folks in the house, you need to move. If there's people here this morning that need to get saved, there's an altar. We'll pray with you. Chase, what can we do? We'll pray with you. You pray from your heart. When do I stop praying when something changes? When something changes. And I encourage you, God, to do that. If there's people here this morning that need help from God, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and He'll lift you up. All humans need help from God. If he needs help, he won't leave you. Let's stand for a second.
say amen to this. I'm glad he didn't leave me the way he found me. Amen. 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 I, uh, Faith and I had an anniversary, and uh, I was looking back some pictures uh, when we got married and got together versus now. Uh, when we got together, I was about 377 pounds, somewhere in that area. I had just got done finishing my last weightlifting competition. And uh, it was my last, dude. And uh, I was about 377 then, and I'm about 295, 293, 292 right now. And I, I was looking at what I was when she met me. And, hey, I used to have a whole chin collection. <laughs> I'm down to two now. Uh, but I, I almost got abs. Don't you laugh. I'm in a lot better health since she met me. Boy, boy, boy. Could you imagine, could you imagine the difference in us when Jesus met us? I'll put this one, when we met him, yeah. and we are right now. I believe God's been good to us, don't you? Amen. I got to wander some mountains that we've overcome because of him. I got to wander some valleys. I got to wander some hardships that he's brought us through. I got to wonder, you know, how much have we learned to praise him through everything? How much have we learned to still live for him? Hey, isn't it something this is a progressive thing? The longer we serve, the sweeter you'll grow. Yeah. I encourage you. I pray the service has helped you today. Amen. Yeah. Anybody this morning, you got testimony, got God's been good to you, you'd like to share it. Go ahead. I say this to you today. Brother Larry Gibson, if you would, my friend, dismiss us in prayer. Love each other as we're just in. 